He is my God, but not the Lord. From him is shut out the frame of an image. By him the angels is destroyed. The lady should have seen this character. Our spiritual master is the ocean of mercy, the friend of the poor and the Lord and master of the devotees. O oh, Master, be merciful to us, and give us the shade of your lotus tree. Your fame is spread all over the three worlds, and we set out for the lotus tree. Jaya Pavo Pada, Jaya Pavo Pada, Pavo Pada, Shira Pavo Pada. Jaya Pavo Pada.
I would like you to translate, I don't mind. of Prabhupada continues in Vrindavan. When Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, he was really at home. He was even more relaxed. He, he would be like that with his leg up. With determination, we're continuing this journey to try and get a place in Vrindavan.
So this Maharaj of Bharatpur was somewhat crazy and we were having to chase him around to try and get this case he got. Meanwhile, I was writing Prabhupada that um, it, it would cost a lot to renovate because it was, there was bats in the place occupying three of the floors, bats. And at night, there'd be so many bats that they'd fly out for their nocturnal feeding and it would block the moon. That many bats. So that's the first thing we would have to contend with in that Lakshmi Rani Kunj, even though it was beautiful. But I wrote Prabhupada that, and because it wasn't email or fax, uh, it took a long time for an answer. Then Prabhupada said, well, <coughs> We are Brahmins and he's a king, so <coughs> he should give us the palace. <coughs> he should give us the palace and he can have a room in the palace. We'll make a room for him. Well, this Maharaj, he wanted money because with a swipe of a pen, Indira Gandhi deposed all the Maharajas of India. I, I had a chance to meet many Maharajas because somehow or other Krishna put me together with the Maharaj of Dongadra, who was the concord of princes. The concord of princes were the lobbyists for the Maharajas in Delhi. So when Prabhupada heard that these Maharajas were dethroned, by a, a simple law and their wealth, they had a ceiling on their wealth now that Prabhupada said, these are not real Maharajas. The real Maharajas, if they had to kill a tiger or a lion before they, with a sword, before they could become Maharajas, these are, these are artificial Maharajas. So what they did uh, especially Gayatri Devi of Jayapur. She was a member of parliament too. So they, they were trying to represent them, the Maharajas, but they had a ceiling on their wealth so they would distribute their wealth to their zamindars, to their landlords. So it was a whole change of the system. And so because the Maharaja Bharatpur, he was in the family of these Jat fighters, now he needed money. So his, his idea was that we're rich Americans, and he also said that his wife ran off with the head of the Peace Corps. Uh, it was a Peace Corps, is a United States uh, philanthropical uh, mission. So uh, he wanted money from us. That was his idea. And this palace was just, not used anymore. It was just one of his palaces. Then the Chudananas sent the throne back. So now Prabhupada said, well, you have to uh, ask the Maharaj for forgiveness. <coughs> so Chudananda, uh, myself, Hayagriva, and Samashunda went to try and appease the Maharaj, at least at this point. So we had one of those taxis with a seat driver, and the Sardarji driver was there, and we went, we actually went to Bharatpur. And the, bar, the, uh, the minister of the Maharaj of Bharatpur said, he's not here. But we already had dealings with that minister, and we knew that he was a liar. <laughs> he even had a mustache, which he twirled like a villain. 
<laughs> so he said he's not there. And at that point, the Maharaja's silver Rolls Royce leaves the palace. Well, our taxi, we said, jeldi, jeldi karo, jeldi, jeldi karo, which means hurry, hurry. And the Sikh tried his best, but the Silver Rolls Royce just left us in the dust and was on the way to Delhi. Well, Achutananda couldn't do it, so Jamuna and I went to Delhi. And the Maharaj liked us, and we were able to appease him. And so now we were reconsidering negotiations again for this Lakshmi Rani Kunj Palace right on the Jamuna River. And this time we rode with the Maharaj in the Silver Rose Royce, <laughs> which he got from Europe. And the Silver Rose Royce had a protuberance at the top for silk hats, for people with top hats. <laughs> It had, a, it had a, an alcohol bar in the back seat. Uh, it was a very luxurious car, and our taxi couldn't catch it. So now the Maharaj is considering it again. Now I'm writing Prabhupada. It still would cost a lot to, to renovate this palace. Also, in the vision of expansion, even though it had four floors, if we expanded in Brindavan, it eventually wouldn't be enough. Plus, it was right in the town, and Krishna arranged us to have a very nice place outside of town. The negotiations eventually broke down with the Maharaja Bharatpur because he was, uh, he was vacillating when he saw that we weren't going to give him any money for this. When Prabhupada said, he's Brahman, we're Brahman and he's a king, he should just give it to us. So I, I presented that to him and that was not what he wanted. So this is breaking down. So. But I was still in Vrindavan, and I was staying with my friend Shaman Devi. And I was imbibing the beauty of Vrindavan and feeling Krishna, Radharani and Krishna in every step. And so, even though this negotiation with the Maharaj broke down, I was feeling very strong because I was in Vrindavan. And like I said, Prabhupada in Vrindavan, it was like his hometown. Eventually they gave him a real hero's welcome. We came back, I'll tell that later, but it was so nice and the Vrindavan mellows were there and uh, we also got to live at the Radha Damodar temple. So, one day, a baby monkey fell through the bars of the windows. When I first went to India, I was wondering, why are there bars on the window in Vrindavan? This is, are we inmates? Prabhupada called us inmates, by the way, sometimes. So, but are we j in jail? No, that's for the monkeys. So, then I saw the monkeys uh, taking people's fruit, and vegetables, breaking <coughs> their bags, especially they attacked old ladies. They were very smart. It ev evolved into them taking tape recorders and passports and, and spectacles as they got better at it. They would ransom it off. But at first it was just food. So I tried playing football and I didn't like it, but I remembered that and a monkey came to get my bog and I went like that on his head and the monkey was going like that. And so what was really endearing is that I saw the people in Vrindavan doing that to the monkeys and they're going like that. 
So, you know, what great men do, others follow, Bhagavad Gita. So, one day a baby monkey falls into the bars of, of Radha Dhammada Temple and the mother is there. <laughs> and so the little baby monkey, I gave it back to the mother and she goes, oh, thank you. So I told Prabhupada that the little baby monkey fell into the bars and <clears throat> I gave it back to the mother and he said, yes, that happened to me too. And uh, now you shall have to feed her <laughs> because she's going to come because she saw you were soft-hearted and sure enough she came every day and she put her paw in there and I'd give her some bulb. Jamuna was making pomegranate juice by hand for Prabhupada, each little bow bet. And she was bringing it to Prabhupada, and she hears, <laughs> She said, Prabhupada, are you talking to the monkeys? He said, yes, I was telling them to go away. <laughs> So this is the interaction, but now the Maharaj of Bharatpur, it broke down, so we had to do something else. So uh, in the meantime, Tamal Krishna came from Calcutta, and it was very nice wandering the forest with him also. And we made tilak out of clay from the Jamuna River, and I was showing him, I was learning all about the places of Vrindavan, and eventually I led the first pilgrimage tours, and then I passed the baton on to Dina Bandu Das, who's doing it very nicely. So I was learning, and I showed Tamal the various temples, but Prabhupada was in Surat, and he wanted us to come there. And in Surat, we stayed with Jariwala in motorcycle Bhavan, and he was a very nice man. And the town of Surat came out to welcome us. And there were, there were banners, people on the balcony, and so many garlands that they covered our head, we had to give them out. They were, it was glorious. We had a truck or some kind of vehicle. They make these altars out of the inside of palm trees. And so we were uh, spraying rose water on people it, it was like not of this world. The whole town came out. And Prabhupada just said, just see how they, they honor Vaishnavas. And it was so nice, and again with Prabhupada. But then he said, now go back to Vrindavan because I still want something in Vrindavan and I will come soon. So then Prabhupada came. And um, in that film, I saw a film recently, one of the segments is the mayor of, of, of uh, Delhi, Hans Raj Gupta, he's got a, a black Nehru suit with a Nehru hat. He was Prabhupada's friend. He was very nice, very nice man. Later on in Delhi, we're riding in Delhi with Hans Raj Gupta in the car and Hans Raj Gupta gave Prabhupada his fan. He was a good, nice man and, and, and a jolly man. And he was one of our chief guests at our Pando program. And so Prabhupada in here, uh, riding, I'm just going to show you how Prabhupada's mind works. We're riding along the bank of the Delhi and, and there's a sign that said, this land is allocated for recreation. So Prabhupada says, Hans Raj, Hans Raj Ji, give us this land. He said, just wait, Swamiji. Prabhupada said, but we're recreation. 
in London, in London, the sign said they wouldn't let us put a sign on the outside. So probably it's in the gate. He said, this is in the inside. They won't let us put a sign on the inside. This is the outside. That's the way Prabhupada's mind. So this is recreation. So he said, wait, Swamiji. So then the next thing was, uh, this land is allocated for education. Oh yes, give it to us, we're education. Just wait, Swamiji. And the next lit parcel was for spirituality. And he said, okay, now you can have this land. And I think that's where the Delhi temple is now. So they were friends. And he went to the airport and put a garland on Prabhupada. And we were there. And Samashunda was with him. And now <coughs> the highest transcendental pleasure, I called it in my book, because if you were to plan what's the highest transcendental pleasure you can have on this planet is to go to Vrindavan with your spiritual master in a car, a chariot. And so we're there. Samashinda, Prabhupada, and I. And I'm waiting for some kind of shloka about Vrindavan, Chintamani, Prakata, Sadmanaso, Kalpabrika, Lakshashi, Tresu, something like that. And sometimes when Prabhupada would uh, speak, he would clear his throat a little bit. <clears throat> uh, he cleared his throat, he's going to do some shloka about Vrindavan. Cement. <laughs> <laughs> He says, we must get cement to build a water tower like that. So he was very practical. Actually, I did get cement, and I had to make the minister. They wanted to bo uh, build movie theaters with the cement. And I said, well, allocate it to us. This is for a temple. But Nehru said, the modern temple is the factory, so it took some determination and some diplomacy. So then <clears throat> uh, we're riding along and a motorcycle gang came and they were kind of looking at us and then Prabhupada gave them the oceanic smile and then they became our escorts. And we went into Vrindavan and we were staying with uh, Mr. Saraf because Mr. Saraf had a parcel of land. And this is what we heard. However, the one's friend, Shama Devi, the, ones, the one who, who fainted when we parted, the one whose deities I got out of the custom, the one who long kirtans we had together in beautiful bridge bossy tunes, now wanted the same piece of property, and now she's our enemy. Prabhupada was the ringmaster. Samashinda was typing all sorts of deeds and, and legal things, and I was, I was putting people in different rooms. Shama Devi had a member of parliament with her to contense, contense this uh, giving of the land to us. Meanwhile, Gorachan Goswami and Madan Mahan Goswami from the Radha Damodar temple we Prabhupada also uh, assigned me the service to get his rooms for life at the Radha Dhammada temple. And Gorchan Goswami, he also wanted money. Gorchan Goswami, Madan Mahan Goswami, they're not even talking and they're in the same courtyard. So I had to do all this. Sam is writing up this deed from, uh, from Mathur. We got this legal papers, and I'm, I'm putting Shama Devi and the MP in one room, and Gorachan Goswami in another room, and Madan Manohan Goswami in another room, and Prabhupada is the ringmaster of this circus. And so, uh, there was a yes and no slip of paper, whether we would get the land, Sharadakshi uh, Vishnu, picked uh, yes from Radharani. So 
uh, Shama Devi didn't like this and she was contending this, but uh, Mr. Saraf already gave it to us, but there was a condition that if we didn't build something in a year, uh, then he would take it back if there wasn't progress. So all this was going on, determination. And so then we all, like I said, moved to Radha Damodar Temple and uh, there at Rupa Goswami Samadhi, Prabhupada gave Nectar of Devotion talks and everybody assembled and it was very beautiful. Meanwhile, Calcutta was going on as well. And so, Tamal writes me a telegram, come to Calcutta immediately, Tamal ODs. So, OD means overdose. <laughs> and OD is a term for overdose, so I'm wondering, what's Tamal overdosing on, the holy name? But it was really Tamal okayed. Now one time a man was distraught because he had a telegram there handwritten and it was like a garbled word left. And he's distraught and he stops me in the street. He says, what is this word? And I said, I can't tell. He said, if it's my sister, she's visiting. But if it's my mother's name, she's dying. So if it's mother, she left, that means his mother died, he didn't know. So I said, well, the rule of thumb is to go to the source. So I took him to the telegraph office and it was his sister visiting, so he was relieved. So Tamal actually uh, wasn't Odin, he was okay. Okay, Tamal okay. And I arrive in Calcutta, and, to my, and Prabhupada's there, and again it's beautiful. And I come in, and it's across from a pakur, a bathing ghat, and Prabhupada said, I have fooled them, Gurudas. And I said, fooled who? Who, Prabhupada? Who, who have you fooled? The mosquitoes. And he was sitting on the ground, and he was like a little child who just did something wonderful. He had that look. And he said, when I sit on the ground, they rise. And one time in the Calcutta temple, he actually got off the Vyasa sun and did it again. And he said, I have fooled them. Who, Prabhupada, the mosquitoes. So, as I said, I, I asked him childlike questions. So I said, Prabhupada, are there mosquitoes in Krishna Loka? They don't bite, they sing. <laughs> so now I'm in charge of this whole pandal. They're building it. We have to get duties, these rugs. <clears throat> Even the day of the pandal, it wasn't finished. And for some reason, Tamal thought, well, if anybody can do it. So this was my duty, and uh, this was going on. We're building the stage and everything. And then Prabhupada says, if, if some people don't want to sit on the ground, like our life members, well, they can have seats. We had about 15 seats. They can pay one rupee if they want to sit on the seats. Well, it was in the middle of the communist war at the time, the Noxalites, they were called Noxalites in Calcutta. And so this was going on. And one of our congregation was a, a man named Colonel Dutta. And he, he was in charge of the, red, of the fort in Calcutta at one time. And he wore a military cap. And he'd, and he'd say, now I'm going on a secret mission, longitude 35 and latitude 86. I said, well, you just gave us the coordinates. I think he just stayed at his house. He wanted to impress us that he was still the soldier. He had this hat. 
So, so now the communists are saying, the Knoxwoods are saying, class consciousness, one rupee seats, and they were, they were uh, re revolting at, at the gate, and they were making noise. So Colonel Dutton wanted to fight them. I said, no, 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 you don't have to fight them. Uh, but Prophet said, what is that noise? What is, again, Gurdas. Why did he call me? All these people, Gurdas, what is that noise? It's the Knox lights, they're complaining that it's class consciousness that uh, there's one rupee seeds. So Prophet said, let them sit in the seats. <laughs> so I said, you can sit in the seats. Now they had no, nothing to contend. But what really, what really, what really did it is Prabhupada was singing the Brahma Samhita prayers and it calmed them down. So now we're ready. We're ready, Prabhupada, to start again some noise. What is that, Gurudasana? Oh, it's your sister, Pishima. Because she had a following. She was the compassionate manifestation of Prabhupada. She looked like Prabhupada and she looked like a cow and, and she was so sweet. And somebody said, my husband just died. And the way she said it, she said, but your husband is with Krishna, with such conviction. We had a wonderful relationship. There was a rivalry between Mayapur and Vrindavan for Pishima, for her to stay. She stayed in Vrindavan a lot. So, what is that noise? It's your sister, Prabhupada. And so, he said, get them to be quiet. Now in India, sometimes the people who are making people quiet are noisier than the people. Chup, kudo, chup, 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 chup. So I did it nicer. So, because Pichi Ma was my friend. Oh, oh, and she really respected Prabhupada. And she realized, oh yeah, my brother, he's gonna speak. Okay, quiet. Prabhupada, it's quiet. I said, oh, your sister just wanted your attention. And he gave me a look like, don't be frivolous. <laughs> uh, so I said, okay, it's quiet now. Then he said, I used to beat her up and I still shall. <laughs> <laughs> So the Pondo was very successful, and we were doing these Pondo programs. In Delhi, we had one right in the center of town. Right in the center of town, Kana Circus. I invited the Poet Laureate, I invited the ambassador from Canada, James George, he was my friend. We invited the scientist, Dr. Atmaram, we invited the mayor of Delhi. We, so we had chief guests each night and Prabhupada would speak on that, like science and spirituality, when the chief scientist came. And he gave a talk about that too. So it's a very successful pandal. Um, Baba Ramdas came, as, as Alpert. Many people came, it was very successful. And Prabhupada was sitting on the Vyasa's on there. Well, suddenly he asks me, is there a WC, a water closet? Well, we actually made a special water closet for Prabhupada in an alley. Right, and so he said, take me there. So he gets off the Vyasa's on, and actually I was holding his hand again. And it was so nice to hold his hand and lead him. And as we were going down the alleyway, 300 people followed us and said, Swamiji, what did we do wrong? Why are you leaving? So I had to head 300 people off. At the, and I said, no, Swamiji's coming back. He's just going to the water closet. Oh, okay. <laughs> the other time I got to hold his hand was in London and we were looking at the YMCA in Holborn, near Bury Place, and we saw there's a nice 
It was a basketball court, but we could make it into a temple. And, but it needed a lot of repair. We went up to the second floor. We went down into the basement and the lights went out. It was completely dark and Prabhupada holds my hand. He, he grabs my hand. And so slowly, slowly, I'm inching along the wall where the stairs were to find the stairs. And finally I found the stairs and a little spear of light came through and I could see a little bit more. And so I was holding Prabhupada's hand and we went up the stairs. And then when we got up the stairs, he let go. But I still felt the Shakti. I didn't wash my hand. I washed everything else, but I kept it out <laughs> for a while. So, so the, then this pandal was so wonderful that now we're going to do it in Bombay. And so even though Brindaban's going on, Prabhupada kept on asking me, go here, go here. And India was a great, a great adventure. We, we, we had more than one GBC course. It was so vast and everything that was going on in Mayapur. Then it, uh, so now we're going to the Bombay Pando, and I thought, what would be a good advertisement? So I was going to do an advertisement in the form of a rupee, because everybody responds to that, but I thought that's a little crass. So I did it in the form of a telegram. Everybody likes, pays attention to telegrams, so I did the telegram logo and Prabhupada there with the danda and inviting people and because we already experienced two pandals we really were really getting good at it and I had to do all the paperwork and uh, the permits and all this and we we're getting it together and making the stage and preparing to feed thousands of people and so again a beautiful Pondo program, Prabhupada's there. And then Prabhupada says, he sees in 7,000 people, he sees this sadhu looking hollow-eyed young kid with matted hair. And he said, go get him. And so I said, oh, again, why me? But I did it and I had to go through the crowd, you don't step over people, but you taught me the etiquette of Vrindavan in India, you don't step on anybody. So I had to go th like this through the crowd, and I, and I pulled this guy out of the crowd, and he saw me on the stage already. He had just come from the caves of the Himalayas, and he was living with the Saivites, and he thought, uh, he saw me on the stage with the camera, and prancing around and photographing Prabhupada in all angles, you know, like this, whatever. And so I, I love to photograph Prabhupada. He changed so much and this is my service. But he thought, what kind of sadhu has a Nikon, you know? <laughs> and then the, so then I'm the same sadhu with the cameras pulling him out of the, you know, he was just there. <clears throat> so I pulled him out and uh, brought him to the stage. Then he hadn't eaten for three days, so he was in the line, and he just gets there, and it was halava, and you said, oh, it's so aromatic in my nose, and I was really ready f to have it. And this crazy me again takes him away, and I said, don't eat this. It's made with motor oil, dalva. There's this dalva, it's not ghee. But to feed thousands of people, you do it. So now he thinks, this guy's really crazy. He's got a camera, he pulls me out of the crowd, and now he's taking my food. <laughs> but I took him behind stage where Prabhupada was, and I fed him and fed him and fed him till his little belly was extended. And that's our Radhanath Swami. And such a good friend and <coughs> soft-hearted and
So uh, that Pondo also was very successful. And then we, then we were trying to get a place in Bombay and we're walking on the beach and Mr. Mahadevya, one of our great people who helped, Sadaji Whitlal, helped us in Bombay. He had a sweet factory. Mr. Mahadevya said, I'm not afraid of death, but I'm afraid for my family. And Prabhupada said, then you have not conquered death. Yes. Very interesting. So, then I'm set back to Vrindavan. And we had Radha, we had this Krishna Balaram temple, Radha Raman land. And so Prabhupada put me in charge of that project. And again, it took great determination. Uh, there were some people, essentially Yasoda Nandan and Guru Kripa and others were collecting. And Sorabi was in charge of the architecture and Jumun and I were in charge of the temple in, gen in general. And so we're there in straw huts and we're building and there's people from Jayapur, women in beautiful saris and bangles and they're carrying bricks. And what people did, they actually had their wealth in bangles. This was the old system. They didn't use banks. And we had a friend, uh, the Patels. They had a factory. And when Indira Gandhi deposed the Maharajas, they also were taking factories. So. Uh, the Patels moved to Iran. What they did is she transferred all their wealth, lots of wealth, into real uh, valuable bangles, gold, silver, diamonds. And when they got to Iran, they sold the bangles and they had wealth there. This is an old system. So, Slowly, 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 now we were building the Krishna Balaram temple. And we did it to specifications. It's really nice to build your own temple because you can make the deity room first class. And Jamuna Jayatirtha and I uh, planned it. Big wide doors, hooks on the walls, everything. A first class kitchen for the deities. So slowly, 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 Vrindavan was being built. We were living in straw huts. Same thing in Mayapur, straw huts. But in Mayapur, there was a flood. And it was, the water was going up. And the Chutananda was there, and he couldn't swim. And he says, Gurdas, do something. And so I could swim. So I, I dove down and opened the door, and the water came out. Actually, recently in the Czech Republic, they reminded me that they gave us these keys when you're swimming, and one went off the wrist. So then they were amazed because I went down like that and got the key. So then we made a game of it. We just threw the key down so everybody could do that. So, and we went to Vishakapatnam with Prabhupada. <clears throat> Again, an adventure. <clears throat> we went to Madras on the train. We met the vice president of uh, India, S.S. Radhakrishnan, at one time. <coughs> Prabhupada did not like him because he did an impersonalist Bhagavad Gita. But we met him. And in Madras, it was nice because they actually gave the whole the whole talk of what Prabhupada said. In some ways, South India was very pious. And then we go on the train together to Vishakapatnam, and that's where uh, I told the story of, I ran after Prabhupada and there were barnacles and, and stones, 
and he said, there's enough to pass you. You don't have to put any more on yourself unnecessarily. I saw my old friend Swami Keshev from London, introduced him, but the main thing about Vishakhapatnam, besides a wonderful photo of Prabhupada on the rocking chair smiling, that'll be in the book, it's a great photo. Uh, Anand Prabhu, his god brother, came back to Vrindavan and he was a puck of first class sadhu. He cooked and everybody, the Gajimat, always wanted him to cook for special events. He was such a good cook that he would make sag out of the jungle. He would actually go out and pick greens and he knew about them. So one day I decided to follow Anand to see what greens he was making and he, he disappeared. I went around the corner, where's Anand? He was up in a tree picking these olives that he gave us, these tree olives. He, his, cook was, his cooking was so great and a lot of it was, like I say, from the jungle and medicinal. He was in his 70s, but he could walk on his hands. He was very strong. And he and Pishima used to have a lot of time together. And then there was this as asthmatic dog that Jamun and I cured. And, and we fed peacocks by hand. It took a lot of patience. You put a little seed down there and then they come. Now, at one point, Jamuna, after a very nice marriage, we parted. And because we still had some feelings for one another, Prabhupada said to Jamuna, don't look at him and don't talk to him. And she's a Taurus and she's a bull and she's stubborn and she didn't talk to me or look at me for years. And, and this was somewhat awkward because we were invited to various gatherings together, like the 40th anniversary of such and such, either Brindavan or London. And so, and then one time, Radhanath was there, Malati, Samashinda, Radhanath, and me, and Jamun is there, and she's talking to them, tell Guru that's this, and you know, tell them it was ridiculous, and then we're doing radio shows, well, I'll, I'll sing and you all can sing, and she's not looking at me and, or talking to me, and uh, so this is going on. And then there's the 45th anniversary and the same thing. But then in England, one of those anniversaries, we were all together, and we all spoke, and then I spoke, and, and people say, oh, how was it you did such great things? And, and I said, well, that was then and this is now. And so uh, I said, you all can do great things. You know, it doesn't have to be us. You can find common ground with people. You can talk to them in your offices. You can give them Krishna consciousness in a certain way and this is what you do. And so it was a rousing, people gave a standing ovation. And I saw Jamuna peeking over there. She, now she was looking at me, uh, even though she didn't want to. So now, later on, I was in Alachua, Florida, and she was there. And I was there, and I said to Mother Mukia, the president, I said, I'd like, to, I'd like to meet with Jamuna. I thought, so many years have passed, and we, had, we did have a nice marriage. And so Jamuna said, well, if he wants to see me, I will. So then I'm wondering, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? And she could be pretty, we never argued, but that's because I let her have her way, because she could be pretty <laughs> forthcoming. <laughs> you know, just like Radharani can turn Krishna's head. So, what are we going to do? 
So, and she was very big at the time. She had an enlarged heart. So she comes out, what is she gonna do? What are we gonna say? I thought we could chant together, if nothing else. She comes out, she says, hi, Gugu. <laughs> and I said, hi, Yumi. That was our pet name. Uh, in some marriages, people have pet names for each other. If, it, if it's a really nice marriage, if, oh no, my husband, my problem, you know. What's the point, you know? Let's be real, and let's be Vaishnavas. Let's, let's, let's share love. It's, it's not an institution. So, as I said, we had a nice marriage. Hi, Gugu, hi, Yumi. And so the closure was there that I wanted, and we and we remembered that asthmatic dog in Brindavan called Dogwood. He'd come, <laughs> and we fed him, prashad him, and we cured him. And there were five owls on the property, which is auspicious. Five owls. owls. Uh, it's auspicious. Yes. But if there's, if there's talking, it's inauspicious, because that's when they're eating. It's very interesting. Like a bucket on the left is auspicious, and, but, uh, and it's full, but if it's empty on the right, it's inauspicious, things like that. So the owls were auspicious. At that time, the monkeys, it was too far out of, too far out for the municipal water supply so again, Prabhupada said, cement, we got to make a water <coughs> tower like that. The first architects from Delhi did not do a very nice temple. It was a box. Then Sur became, we based it on the new Shamashunda temple. There was an old one and a new one. It had a darshan mandap, it had a courtyard. They wanted to cut down the tamal tree. There was only six of them in Vrindavan. Krishna Das Babaji, one of Prabhupada's god brothers, would come when Prabhupada came. There's no fax, email, no phones. He just knew when Prabhupada came. All he'd do would laugh and chant. He was beautiful. <laughs> he'd stay with Anand. Prabhupada loved him. So he and I said to Prabhupada, that this tamal tree should not be cut. Sometimes Serbi could be a little, you worked with him, I don't know, but he could be a little ruthless. So Prabhupada says, move the temple. We just changed all the blueprints. And Prabhupada used to sit under that tamal tree. One time he asked uh, the leaders to talk. I told you this, I think, and they were doing shlokas and everything, I was feeling inadequate. And then it was my turn to talk and I spoke from my heart and Prabhupada was sitting under the tamal tree and he called me in afterwards and he said, you have spoken so nice, now I can retire. And he said, Pishi my likes it too. So this was, he didn't retire of course. Nobody should retire. Retire means getting tired again. <laughs> retire. We're going to die with our sandals on, you know, doing service. <laughs> that's, that's how to do it. Be in the now, serve. It's, it's the beauty. As, as you said, we're instruments of Krishna. So now, one more, two more miracles. Two more miracles of Prabhupada. The first one, uh, well, so in Vrindavan, we got this machines from Delhi to try and find sweet water, because there was no municipal pipes going out to Raman Reti. And so we had no water, and it was all salty. Now the people around the area didn't know what to make of us. They were dancing white elephants, Prabhupada called us, dancing white elephants. And Shama Devi now wanted this land, so she was talking against us. And so the whole area was not sure about us. The machines from Delhi didn't work. 
Didn't work. Prabhupada one morning takes his cane, we're walking, and he puts his cane on the ground. He says, dig here, which we did, and there was sweet water. In the midst of salt water. And now we gave sweet water to all the neighbors. Now they liked us. Now they liked us. Now they accepted us. This is the miracle. And so the other miracle is Prabhupada gave me so much time, everything, he took me with him, but still, I wanted more, I wanted more. This is like Krishna consciousness, it's ever fresh. Nava Yoga, you want more. The holy name is comforting. Oh, it's so nice. The prasadam is so nice. The prabhus are so nice. It's what a nice thing. The nature is so nice. I still didn't have enough time with Prabhupada, so the one niche of time I wasn't with him was 2.30 in the morning in Mayapur, it's the Lotus Building. I go outside his room and I chant loudly. What is that? I hear from inside. Oh, it's Gurudas, there's somebody sleeping at the gate, at the door. Prabhupada says, come on. And it was really nice, again, the table can come here, and he was talking about a letter to Indira Gandhi, it was very sweet. So next morning I go there and chant loudly. This time, Prabhupada comes out of the room, and we walk to the edge of the Lotus Building, and the start of the Gaushala was being built. And so, he said, the farmers, they're asking Krishna, give me water, give me water. And the farmers say, all right, take it. And when he went like this, take it, shh, water came out of the sky theatrically. Shh. Just like when, when Prabhupada asked Sam Rishinda to ask George Harrison to print the Krishna book. Well, we were just giving things to George Prabhupada but Prabhupada said, well, make me the bad guy. And so Samashinda finally asked Prabhupada to David Wynne, the sculptor laureate's house outside of London. Well, Prabhupada would like you to help publish this Krishna book. Prabhupada told me it was Krishna uh, writing it on his shoulder, the Krishna book. And so George, you could see the machinations of his mind. Oh, you're like other people. We thought you were just really spiritual, but now you're wanting something. And at that time, lightning came and shook the house and there's darkness. And so David Wynn had a generator and so the lights go on and George is smiling. He says, Krishna, must you be so theatrical? <laughs> so the same thing. Krishna says, take it. Shh. Prabhupada didn't make anything great change of expression, just like when the butterfly went on his finger. He just walked into the room. So, this is the wonderful, miraculous adventure. Then Bombay started, Calcutta, Vrindavan became glorious, Krishna Balaram Temple. So, that was then, this is now. This is a wonderful place a wonderful vision. Like I said, you may be in the forest, but I see it as so much potential, so much great opportunity to give Krishna conscious tours, restaurants, bakeries, people coming, petit som. This is a chance. Yes, I was there then. It's not so great. I just they said, how did you do this? Well, I just wanted to see Prabhupada smile at night. That's how, that's all. I just wanted to see him smile. He'd say, what news? And then I'd say, da, 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 and he'd smile. And he didn't know he'd smile. There's a couple of times he really chastised me, but it was also a caress. So now that was then, now there's more generations of Krishna consciousness. Eastern Europe, so many languages, and this is from Prabhupada, 
going on the boat, meeting a few people, starting a few temples, and there's many apples in those temples too. Thank you very much. And each place I, I make new friends. It's so enlivening. New devotee friends. It's so
seminar that then up and then so we'll, we'll discuss the times as well and then we'll point back to you and see what, what suits both you and Harry down because then you can all and you'll enjoy speaking with Harry down as well. Thank you for me to who does the community care seminar. I think you'll enjoy speaking with them because I think it would be very valuable to you as well. Yes.
Die is gewoon bij achter het kasteel in de tent. 